Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today for your how-to guide for 1099s. My name is Sharissa and I'll be your tour guide to make sure you are able to get your vendor information to tax 99 for e-filing. Before we get started, I do want to go over some key things you need to know before starting your 1099 filing process. First question, do I need to file a 1099? The IRS requires you to file a Form 1099-NEC for any non-employee that you paid $600 or more in cash, check, or direct deposit during the calendar year, or withheld any federal income tax from under the backup withholding rules. Please note if you've previously reported any information on Box 7 of the 1099-MISC form, which is the total amount of non-employee compensation, this information is now reported on the 1099 NEC in box one. When are 1099s due? 1099s are due to the IRS and your contractors by February 1st. However, we recommend you e-file before January 30th. This is to be sure your 1099s can be postmarked to your contractors by February 1st. Do I need to file in my state? Some states require separate filing. If you need to file separately with your state, our 1099 e-file service can help. For more information, please see Does My State Need Form 1099 MISC to be filed in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started. First, I want you to go to the top left-hand corner and click Edit, and then scroll down to Preferences and click Preferences. On your left-hand navigation in your preferences box, I want you to go to where it says Tax 1099. Once there, you're going to go ahead and click the tab that says Company Preferences at the top. It's going to ask, do you file 1099 MISC forms? Yes or no? We're going to go ahead and select yes. And from here, you can go directly to map your account boxes on form 1099 MISC. Or if you're ready to prepare your 1099s, including mapping accounts, you can click there as well. I'm just going to go ahead and press OK, and then we're going to go to Vendors at the very top, and then go to Print e-file 1099s. Here we're going to click on the 1099 wizard, and we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to press Continue through these first few, and we're going to go to where it says Map Vendor Payments and Accounts. You're going to go through here and double check to make sure everything looks good. and make sure that anything that is non-employee compensation is mapped properly. And then press continue. After that, we're gonna go back to the vendor center and we're gonna go ahead and just double check some of our vendors to make sure everything looks good. You're gonna make sure their full name is entered in and their address details are also correct. If everything looks good, we're gonna go to where it says tax settings, and we're gonna make sure that their vendor tax ID is entered in, and select vendor eligible for 1099. Please remember they're only eligible if they've been paid over $600 in cash, check, or direct deposit during the 2020 calendar year, or if they've been withheld any federal income tax from under the backup withholding rules. After that, we'll press OK, and then we're going to go back to Vendors, Print E-File 1099s, and go back to the 1099 wizard. I'm going to press Get Started. We're going to continue through our selected vendors. We're going to verify our 1099 info for all of our users. Press Continue until we get to Choose a Filing Method. We're going to go with E-File and we're going to go to 1099 e-file service. This is going to go ahead and jump us over to tax 99. If you don't already have an account, please go ahead and set up an account for yourself. I already have one, so it's going to automatically start asking me questions for my QuickBooks desktop workflow. This is to help determine the best upload method for my system. There are a few ways of how to pull the 1099 information over either through the plugin, the web connector, or through an Excel import. But we're going to go ahead and go back to those questions. 
are you using a version of QuickBooks Desktop from 2018 to 2021? I'm going to press yes. Are you a company network using a firewall, proxy server, and or do you have an antivirus program installed on your machine? I'm going to select no. Do you have admin privileges on your PC? Yes. Are you an admin user in QuickBooks Desktop? Yes. Do you have access to the PC or server where QuickBooks Desktop is installed? Yes. And it's going to tell me the best option for you is to use QuickBooks plugin. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. A few things to note before downloading the plugin. If you have used any previous versions of the plugin, go ahead and remove those from your desktop computer so that you can go ahead and, and reinstall this new version. From here, we're going to download the QuickBooks plugin and user guide, and it's going to download to your computer. You'll also see that you have the user guide available to you right there as well as within the folder that is holding the plugin download. So you will have a PDF version of the user guide as well as the plugin. We're gonna go ahead and click on the plugin to start the process. And the Windows installer will prepare to install that for us. And then the QuickBooks import setup will start. We're going to go ahead and click next. And we're going to select modify. We do have modify, repair, or remove, but since we've already previously removed any past versions, we're going to go ahead and select modify. We're going to select where we want that to download to. Yours will look like that. Mine's a little different looking, but I'm going to go ahead and press next and then install. And that was really quick. We're going to go ahead and press finish. And within your user guide, you're going to see on step three, how to run the import right here. So we're going to go to vendor tax 1099.com e-file and then upload 1099 data. So let's hop over to our QuickBooks, go to where it says vendors and then tax 99.com e-file. And you can see the version in the about section, the version you should have is 1.5.20.0. Back to vendors, and we're going to select upload 1099 data. From here, the tax 1099 pop-up will show an email and password that you need to enter in. This is going to be your tax 1099 credentials. So your email, and password, the export year will be 2020, and then if you are doing the NEC or the MISC form, you're going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to go ahead and select the NEC form because we're going to start with that one, and then press login. Once you click log in, it will start syncing over the data from your QuickBooks desktop over to Tax 1099 so that you can start the e-file process within Tax 1099. You'll see that I have a few people listed here and that the import is completed. Here I can check to see all of my 1099 vendors if they match what the upload has said has been brought over. You'll notice that Carl Nye isn't on here, and that's because I need to do a 1099 MISC form for him. The ones I am doing, if we remember when we did the login, I was choosing the 1099 NEC form. At the very top, you'll also see whether it's good data, missing or invalid required data, or if there was an error in the recipient data. And those little dots will indicate where that information is. So for example, Larry Landscaping, I have missing and invalid required data. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. So you'll see here that the phone number has an asterisk next to it. I do need to have that entered. I'm just going to go ahead and type in a random number and then press update. And now the dot next to Larry is green. And everything is up to date. I'll double check 
the payer names, the box value, and the 1099 category. If any action needs to be made because I need to edit anything, I can press the edit pencil icon to the far right hand side. So for example, if I need to make any edits to Bayshore Water, I can go ahead and press edit to the far right hand side and the box value will be editable from there. I could update it and then press update to the far right hand side. I'll just go ahead and press cancel. To move on to the next page, you're gonna go ahead and say select all and then press next. This is gonna go ahead and take you to the next page where you're gonna confirm the number of records that were uploaded successfully as well as pressing okay to begin the process of the 1099 forms. From here, you can say select all and select the date to schedule your IRS and state e-filing. The soonest you can do it is January 8th of 2021. So if you need to, you can select that. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at February 1st of 2021. And then from here, you're gonna select if you want it mailed via USPS, if you wanna email the recipient, do a TIN match, or if it's available, the box will be highlighted for state filing. If you noticed that Bay Shore, you can't send an email to the recipient because there is no email on file. So that's an indication that maybe you need to go back, update the email so that you're able to email the 1099 out to that vendor. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do the MISC form. Same exact process. You're gonna go back to QuickBooks. You're gonna log in with your tax 1099 credentials. You're gonna select the MISC form and press login. Remember when you press login, it's going to then start syncing the data over from QuickBooks over to Tax 1099. And you'll see that Carl Nye was on that upload import and that way he is now in there and ready to start filing his 1099 MISC. And just like the other vendors, I could go in, make any edits or changes or delete anything. Another way to import the data would be to use the QuickBooks web connector. So I'm just gonna start a new import because we're gonna go ahead and go through the web connector instructions now. To find those, you go to the far left-hand side, click on import and QuickBooks desktop, and you'll find that QuickBooks desktop option. From here, I'm gonna click the blue button that says download. And that's going to go ahead and go into my downloads. And then we're going to hop over to QuickBooks and go to File, Update Web Services. And that's going to pull up our web connector. If you need to file your 1099 MISC form in the password box, you're going to go ahead and put in your password hyphen M for MISC. If you're going to do the NEC form, you're going to put in your password hyphen N for the NEC form. That way it knows what it needs to bring over. And then you'll check mark that box, press update selected, whichever you're going to be using it for. So either the NEC or the MISC form, it's going to go ahead and run the application progress and the total progress. And once they both hit 100%, you know that information has been transferred. If you need more information in the application column, there is a link for support that you can click in case you need help or assistance. Once the sync is complete, you can go ahead and jump over to your email. And on that email, you can click the button. This says click here to complete your 1099 filing process. And all that information will show up there. If you don't receive it, where we downloaded the web connector, there is a link for, I did not receive a web connector sync confirmation email, and you'll just click there to proceed. And just like the previous one where you needed to update any information, go ahead and update it. Press update. And then you're gonna go ahead and say select all and then press next to go to the next page. You'll make sure that those records updated successfully. You will check mark the boxes for any 
mailing by USPS, any email recipients, tin match or state filings. Remember you can view, edit or delete any information from here as well. If you need to make any edits or changes after you've already submitted those, you're going to go ahead and go to forms, manage forms, and then you're going to go ahead and select the tax year 2020 and then click edit form to the far right hand side under the actions column to make any edits or changes. Once you're done there, you can go to view and edit and submit forms, which takes us back to where we were originally with all of our users. We're going to make sure we do layer landscaping so that we make sure that we get those forms out. I'm going to select all to the far left hand. Press next. And then this is just going to tell you that even though the scheduled date may be in the future, the recipients, the vendors, will get an email if chosen in the next 24 hours. If mail is chosen to go out, the requests will go out immediately and they should receive their 1099s via mail within five to seven business days from the date the forms are mailed out. So between now and whatever your scheduled date is, the forms can be edited at no additional cost. The scheduled date is the date when the forms are submitted to the IRS. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Double check that I've reviewed and verified data for the submission and press OK once more. I do have duplicates just because I ran both the web connector and the plugin, and that's totally fine just for the time being. So I'm just going to go ahead and press OK because I do want to continue. I reviewed and verified the data once more. And that's going to take me to my payment section. So yours is going to look a little bit different. If you don't have a prepaid balance in the account, it will have a section for you to enter in your card information so that you can pay and submit to e-file. Once you enter in the card information, or if you have the prepaid balance to pay for it, once you click the blue pay and submit to e-file, all that information will start going out. The email will be out within 24 hours to the vendor, and then they should be receiving by mail if chosen within five to seven business days. Super quick, super simple, super easy. All you have to do is use either the plugin or the web connector, or if you don't want to use either of those, you do have the Excel spreadsheet as well in case you want to upload it from there. And then you just go through the flow, pay and submit to e-file, and you're taken care of for your 1099 for vendors. If you have any questions, please never hesitate to reach out to us. Also remember, we do have links to help guides in the description below. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon.